bankers' loans and Wall Street greed, but you were stuck with the bill. Home values okay. have dropped right. so far so fast that nearly 25% of mortgage holders today owe more than their house is worth. And with unemployment so high so long, many face foreclosure. If you thought your home value couldn't drop any more, have a look up and down the block. You might say, there goes the neighborhood. The new threat from the Great Recession is the sudden surge in the number of abandoned houses. Vacant homes have become so ruinous to some neighborhoods that one city, Cleveland, decided it had to find a solution. Perfectly good homes. Worth seventy-five, a hundred thousand dollars or more a couple of years ago, are being ripped to splinters in Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, Ohio. Here, the Great Recession left one fifth of all houses vacant. The owners walked away because they couldn't or wouldn't keep paying on a mortgage debt that can be twice the value of the home. Cleveland waited four years for home values to recover. Now they have decided to face facts and bury the dead. Why destroy them? Jim Rokakis, a former county treasurer, showed us. We're looking at a neighborhood that has almost as many vacant houses awaiting demolition as there are houses with people living in them. We have one here, one here, one there. Rokakis is leading the effort to tear down thousands of abandoned homes because they're rotting their neighborhoods from the inside out. It often starts, he told us, when a vacant house becomes an open house to thieves. It's a nice house from the roof to about here. And then down here it's been ripped to pieces. What's going on? I was just well, talking about this with a friend today. This is as high as they could reach without using ladders. I got some houses in Toledo in a similar shape. Most of these houses, the aluminum and the vinyl siding comes off. It's getting about a buck a pound. Essentially, foreclosure scavengers have been through here. The uh, thieves have gone high tech. They know when evictions are occurring because they're posted online, and they will follow the uh, the sheriff that are usually there that afternoon or that evening. So in here, what you're going to see, um, uh, well, I guess they took wow. everything, including the proverbial kitchen sink. Right, the sink is gone. The plumbing, the plumbing is gone in this house. Um, all the copper, anything of uh, metal that had value is gone. The furnace is gone. The light fixture, light fixture is gone. Out. How often is this happening in Cleveland? This happens every day. And uh, the foreclosure crisis creates this uh, spiral because uh, as a result of this, people are now more likely to leave neighborhoods like this, and as they leave, the scavengers come in and do the same thing to the house next door or across the street. To make the house next door worth more instead of less, vacant land created by demolition is often given to the neighbors and sometimes turned into fields or gardens. Cleveland and Cuyahoga County believe that only by turning the failures of the Great Recession into green space can they stabilize the value of what's left. Otherwise, the scourge would keep spreading. When you see a house that the scavengers have torn apart like this one, what does it do to the guy next door? It clearly uh, makes his house worth a lot less money because when you've got four or five, six vacant houses on the street like this, your house isn't worth a percentage less. It's just worthless. It's probably worth about thirty dollars. <laughs> I mean, seriously, who knows? It's sad. It's really sad. Roberta Bryant lives at the end of the street in a house made essentially worthless by her vacant neighbors. Do you think in this neighborhood you could even sell this house if you wanted to? No, I don't think anybody will buy it. Are you interested? <laughs> I don't live in Cleveland. Well, this could be your summer home. <laughs> In theory, there shouldn't be this many abandoned houses. When homeowners walk away, the bank is supposed to take responsibility. But one little-known feature of the Great Recession is that many banks are walking away, too, unwilling to maintain a house whose value has crashed. Very often, a bank will take a property to the point of foreclosure, but won't go to sheriff sale because they don't want that property. They don't want the responsibility of the eight to $10,000 bill that comes to turn this house down. Former County Treasurer Jim Rokakis says some banks have turned their backs on a blight they created. When a normal real estate market, uh, people are out looking for loans. In the perverse real estate market we created in this country you know, during the period 
2006. This wasn't people looking for money. This was money looking for people. This and started long before 2000, buddy. Made without down payments and without the, uh, verification of income. And I might also add phony appraisals. And this is the result. This is the result. And it's not just here. It's all over America. All over America, 11 million homeowners owe more than their house is worth. They're said to be underwater. A lot more than that. More neighborhoods would collapse if it weren't for people like Linda Bazell, who refuses to walk away from her mortgage, even though it might be best. The mortgage company called me and said that uh, I was getting ready to go into foreclosure. So I mailed a payment in that day, and it was the last of my savings. That you sent in on this mortgage that's underwater? Oh, yeah. Her house is worth 50000 and she owes 100000 A financial planner might tell her to put something away for retirement rather than pay a mortgage that will never recover, especially since she lost her job in nursing last April. What have you been cutting back on? Sometimes food. I would go to the food bank in order to make up the difference um, so that I wouldn't be completely hungry. Sometimes I wouldn't get my medications renewed. I take uh, medication for high blood pressure. And my doctor could always tell when I didn't take them. And he said, oh, no, you can't do that. No, no. You're living on unemployment right now? Yes. What about the next mortgage payment? I'm going to pray. As best I can do, I'm going to pray that I find a job. When you think of it, her neighbor's home values are being propped up by Linda Bazell's fragile grip on the American dream. We found a lot of people spending their last dollar. The biggest lie ever told, folks. Therefore, <clears throat> save their neighborhood. One of the biggest lies ever told. $50,000 more than her home is worth, and her dream house has turned into a money pit. The gas line needed to be replaced. The sewer line needed to be replaced. Uh, the plumbing was bad. Uh, the roof was leaking. Do you have any savings? No. No. So you're living paycheck to paycheck. Absolutely. Writing yeah. checks to the contractors mm -hmm. and to the bank. Yep. I used to go out with friends and have dinner, and and uh, I just I don't do any of those things anymore. A few miles away, Beverly Anderson and her neighbors are the only thing standing between their neighborhood and utter ruin. For them, paying the mortgage is a matter of principle. That's just how I was raised. Once you. You know, you sign it, it's a, it's a contract, you uphold what you can for as long as you can. These folks bought the first homes in what was supposed to be a 100-house development outside Cleveland called Cinema Park. Well, I think you but guys know where I'll be going soon. broke in the recession, leaving just six occupied homes, surrounded by empty acres, roads to nowhere, and fire plugs with nothing to protect. Immediately, when the boards went up, all of our mortgages went underwater. Our hopes, our dreams, our savings. Norma Scott's predicament is typical around the Hope state. and change, baby. $100,000 mortgage, $100,000 I'm sure you bought that line, hook, hook and sinker. Plan to keep on paying, including high school teachers. And Monica keep on losing. Because I signed on the line. I made a promise. I made a commitment. And I can still afford it, basically. You know, there are lots of people all over the country, many thousands of people who are mailing the keys to the bank and walking away. They can't figure out how it makes sense to put more money into a mortgage that's underwater. Can't speak for them. I can only speak for me and my reputation that I have to uphold. Your signature means something. Well, yeah. you're a stand-up woman. You're yeah. definitely the exception to the rule. Because most people are going to throw in the towel and just quit paying. Cancer and had to stop working for a while. I made the mortgage payments. Uh, for well, I'm going to try to stop this and start another one per real the quick. This is Econ Cat 88. I'll be signing and off here shortly. You a letter last Christmas Eve. Yes, and foreclosed on my property. It seems to me that you're living day to day, waiting for a telephone call or a letter from waiting the sheriff. From the sheriff. 